Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into In the Pits. This episode with Carlos from Get That Shot, it's a great one. Uh, he talks about lots of things from that side of the camera that I personally had no idea about. Also, keep your eyes peeled for announcements coming soon regarding the podcast appearing on other platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. One last reminder, the show will be opening up sponsored segments, so if you have a brand you would like to have featured on the show, please contact the email listed in the description below. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Welcome, everyone, to Episode 3 of In the Pits Paintball Podcast. The podcast is focused on everything that has to do with the paintball scene here in Texas, from professional players and teams to new divisional programs, local tournament series, field owners, Texas-based brands, and even this episode, which is... uh, a, we have a photographer slash videographer with us. Uh, every week is going to be about a 30-minute short and sweet episode, new topic, new special guest. I'm Christian Smith. I'm a player for the Texas Titans. In this episode, we are going in the pits with Carlos, the man behind the camera for Get That Shot. Carlos, how are you doing this evening? How are you doing, Christian? I'm doing well. Good. Good to hear, man. Uh, so for the people that are listening right now, that uh, maybe they don't know about you. Uh, how long have you been involved in the Texas paintball scene? Um, I want to say, let's see, approximately four years, roughly. Maybe uh, sometime in 2018 is uh, when I started doing uh, photography. Or not, um, photography, photography with my phone, and uh, you know, and then it evolved from there, um, you know, to camera and video and all that other good stuff. Awesome. Uh, do you have any history as a player? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm actually ranked D5. I uh, played uh, one USXBO with uh, Texas Chaos as D4. Uh, didn't do too well in that tournament, but I also played uh, three man tour- NXL three-man tournaments. I uh, was able to pick up two first places, a third, and a fifth place in uh, those tournaments. Um, so I played those... Uh, Maybe like in 2019, 2020, I think was the last time I played uh, tournament paintball. And uh, from that point on, it's just been uh, rec ball or, you know, recreational play. And then uh, playing with the teams that are um, going to practice uh, to Delta Field paintball that are going up to USXBL events. And, of course, just taking photos uh, more than playing now. So. Gotcha, gotcha. So, when was the last time you played then? Oh my gosh, uh, the last time I played, man, it was probably about eight months ago, eight nine months ago, maybe more. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. Uh, so, what was it that made you want to get into paintball photography specifically? Like, do you have a background as a photographer? Uh, I don't have a background as a photographer. Um, basically, I just started messing around with my phone, taking photos. In the field, you know, on the other side of the net, and you know, uh, in the field, and uh, I just started uh, learning how to use the manual settings on my camera. I'm sorry, on my phone, and then uh, I went ahead and bought a, a starter camera. It's called a Sony A6000 a Alpha 6000, and uh, basically just started uh, learning the skills from there. Um, I upgraded cameras several times, and uh, you know, I was able to to uh, meet and uh, get a lot of advice from the, you know, the, the local and uh, the big photographers like uh, Brian from Ver- Verbal, you know, and just watching like uh, all the other photographers, just taking a little bit from them and uh, just seeing what they're doing and how they've been, become successful and uh, trying to, to do uh, something similar to what they're, they are doing. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I've seen, uh, so there's a page for people that don't know, there's a page on Facebook uh, for, you know, paintball photographers and videographers. They all, you know, kind of share advice, shots, you know, tips for each other, um, you know, settings as well. Uh, I see, you know, big names on there too, you know, like Verbal, like Yosh, like uh, Blue Insights Media, like a bunch of guys that are on that page. And it's really cool to see them all, uh, you know, share stuff and help out the newer guys. Um, yeah. So what's the, uh, as far as your current setup that you run for your camera, do you run multiple bodies or do you just run the one body? Okay, I do have two bodies. Uh, my I have my secondary bodies, a Sony A7R three. Uh, it's not a sports camera, but you know, you're able to still get like real good photos. 
Uh, my current setup is uh, the Sony flagship camera, the Sony A1. And I usually pair that up with the uh, 70 to 200 millimeter uh, f2.8 lens. And uh, sometimes uh, the 135 millimeter f1.8, uh, you know, and that's the, the current setup that I'm doing. Uh, that Sony A1 camera is, uh, it's, uh, it's good for stills, of course, and then it also does video. So uh, lately I've been trying to get more into the video side of things. Uh, I, I feel I have a pretty good grasp on the, on the photos and I need to uh, keep practicing and, you know, honing my skills uh, for video. Yeah, man, you've definitely been killing it lately on photos. Like, uh, it seemed like, you know, sometime last year was when I really started to uh, get familiar with your shots. Uh, and it's great to see that you're doing video now. So uh, I know that when we were chatting before, you said, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, in the editing process, you take those, uh, some of those stills you are actually filming video at the time. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, basically uh, the camera that I have, uh, you know, it, it's a top of the line Sony camera. It's able to shoot uh, 30 frames per second, which translates to basically if you hold down the shutter for one second, that's 30 photos, which can be turned into a video, right? Um, this camera can probably uh, do maybe like seven or eight seconds worth of nonstop shooting. So, you know, that translates to a few seconds of, uh, a video basically and that's one of the techniques I use um, you know when I'm trying to shoot like a breakout right and, and like I'm tracking a player you know I want to try to get uh, all those shots from beginning all the way until the buffer runs out right and then I'm able to either use any of those photos or I'm able to create a video with those photos so um, it's a it's just a dual dual use you know you're doing two things at once yeah, man. Uh, it seems like, you know, doing it that way. I think Verbal does it that way as well. Um, yes. Uh, we use the same uh, camera, at least one of them. And uh, he's helped me out a lot uh, throughout everything. And, you know, so he's, uh, he's a real good guy. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, so uh, kind of, a, you know, going a little bit further into your equipment is how you protect it. So, like, as a photographer, obviously, you know, you're standing on the sideline. You're probably standing in lanes a lot of the time. You you get shot, you know, more than the players do yeah. during the event. So what are some ways that photographers protect themselves and their gear, like, during events? So uh, when I'm taking photos, I find it easier to protect my camera because I do not have to be on a tripod. So I could dismount my camera. And uh, when I'm not actively shooting anything or I'm just waiting for something to develop, I could point the camera down or up, you know, with the lens. So it doesn't get uh, hit, hit directly. And I also use a uh, rain cover that covers my camera from uh, basically from my lens all the way through the body. So that helps out a lot um, to keep paint out of the buttons and, you know, just messing the, the inner electron electronics of a camera. So that's the way i protect it uh for photos for video it's a little harder um you know in video you're just basically waiting uh for that moment uh when when the players start shooting you know you're praying that the player who's trying to shoot someone out hits that person because if he doesn't he's gonna start shooting back and that's when you get whacked so uh it's a it's a gamble you know sometimes it pays off other times you get hit in the lens gotcha yeah uh i no, back when I was playing at NCPA, uh, one of my friends who also had graduated from UT, uh, he would always duct tape a bunch of foam onto, you know, the side of the body and the side of the lens itself. Do you do anything like that? Uh, I do not. I just use the rain cover. Um, honestly, like just uh, even if I don't have a rain cover on, I'm pretty good about protecting my camera from getting hit. Uh, it gets hit the most when I'm doing video, and it's just because you have to have the camera uh, still, you know, and you can't, you can't, basically you, you either, you're going to sit there and take it and you're going to get the shot or you're, you're going to have to pan away and it's gone. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so it seems like, uh, you know, the main goal is to protect the lens, but the body, you yes. know, may be able to take a hit or two. Yeah, I mean, the camera is able to take a hit, but I mean, it's just like, you know, when, when you're carrying around a $6,500 camera with a $2,500 lens, you know, 
it's you don't want it getting um, you know ruined by paint or, or you know a direct hit usually the cameras will be able to take it you just have to uh, clean it a little bit you know um, and then you're able to keep going uh, they, they are designed i guess to take a beating but just a paintball is just like a whole another animal Absolutely, man. But uh, some of the shots that y'all are able to get are just absolutely insane. Uh, so tell me about, like, when you were first starting and really over the recent years, how did you build up your following? Like, did, I know you said you started just with your cell phone. Like, did you just go yeah. out to practices and take photos there or go to events and, you know, just start building up your portfolio? Or how exactly did you get your name out there? So, um my local field here is Delta Field Paintball. I live five minutes away, so when I would go play with my friends, uh, I would just play for a little bit, and then I would, uh, you know, when I needed a break or whatever, I would start uh, taking photos on my phone. Uh, started learning the manual mode, right? And then once I once I saw the the, the limitations of a cell phone, well, I wanted to get a beginner camera so that I can learn how to use a camera properly, right? So uh, that camera allowed me to practice, uh, you know, the framing, uh, following a subject. It allowed me to learn uh, the different video and, and photo formats, and you know, underexposing the image, uh, all, you know, all, all the all the manual settings. But again, it's a beginner camera, so it's limited. Uh, so I then upgraded to a, a third, uh, second body, Sony, uh, the Alpha sixty four hundred. It was a great camera, but uh, it still took 10 photos per second. Um, I made another upgrade, which is the Sony 7 r 3 uh, Really good resolution, uh, very good camera, but uh, again, 10 frames per second. So I, I figured, you know what, I need to get myself a, a sports uh, photography camera. And Sony came out with the A1, uh, you know, their flagship camera. And, you know, when I saw that, you know, I thought to myself, I have to get this camera. Like the the shots that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to get with this camera will be unbelievable. And uh, so far, I think uh, I've been able to do a decent job uh, taking photos and editing photos. Um, you know, with this tool. Yeah, man. I mean, just looking even in your background, you know, all the prints that you have on your wall and on your desk, and you know, on your shirt too. You've definitely been. Uh, making leaps and bounds lately i could i could tell you that for sure uh and you know other people have noticed too i mean you've just made the jump you know you just recently became anxl pro media uh you know how how was that like getting there so um it was pretty amazing feeling uh stepping on the pro field because uh it is the first uh thing that um i said to myself when i started taking photos i said well my goal is to uh, one day make it into the pro field. You know, this was about four years ago. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to uh, have a, a Brian uh, from Verbal Photo teach me a lot of things. And, uh, you know, other photographers helped you out. You ask questions. And, uh, you know, and I was lucky enough to be able to access the pro field at, uh, at the Sunshine State Major. Uh, I believe it was in March. Uh, Rye guy, uh, he he helped me out a lot, and uh, he was able to get me a pass with ProStar, and uh, basically for my first uh, event uh, shooting in the pro field, my responsibility was to shoot uh, Infamous and uh, Carolina Crisis, which are two of the ProStar uh, sponsored teams. You know, and um, being the first time there, you know, you you, you kind of got to pinch yourself. So, you know, you're looking to your right, it's Thomas Taylor. You're looking to your left, it's like Tyler Harmon. Uh, you know, all the Dynasty guys, and you're like, wow, my goodness, like, like this is happening, like, it's real. So, you know, you got to, like, pinch yourself, uh, you know, snap out of it, pinch yourself, and just, you know, I, I said, well, it's time to get in the field and time to put in the work. Let's go. So, pretty amazing feeling. Um, I, I just can't describe it. It's like, uh, I would compare it, like, getting drafted, you know, in the NFL, and, you know, and you're going to go play for that team. Well, now... Now I get to play uh, in the pro field shooting for pro shot. That's awesome, man. I mean, like, that's that's basically, you know, the the top, you know, the the highest goal there is really, uh, you know, getting to shoot for NXL Pro Media. So, uh, you know, tell me a little bit more, like, being in the on the pro field as pro media. So you said 
do you, you uh, your first school or your first job at that first NXL event was to uh, shoot for Infamous and shoot for Crisis. So yes. are you are you picked up by like specific companies to shoot for their teams, or how does that work exactly? Uh, well, yeah, of course, you know you had like uh, GI Sports and a Pro Char, uh, Lone Wolf Paintball, and, and other um, other companies, you know, that are uh, pretty high up there, and they're able to to assist uh, with the media pass process. Uh, so you need to, of course, have your skill and um, have somebody help help you give, give you a little bit of help, you know, in that, in that department. Gotcha. So, so it sounds like there there is a little bit of like a, a process where you have to apply and they look through your portfolio and all that. Um, I, I'm I, I'm not exactly sure, but I mean I, I'm pretty certain that uh, you know the stuff that you're putting out there. Uh, a lot of people are looking at it, you know, and and then you know you are at a certain level where you're like, okay, well this guy would do good, or you know somebody sees that hey this guy's doing good. Let me work with him or let's work together and, you know, one thing leads to the next and, and that's how, how it happens. Gotcha. All right. Um, were you also at the uh, NXL Dallas event? I was, yes. Cool. Uh, do you have any plans to film or shoot any of the other NXL events this year? Uh, I am not going to be attending any NXL events for the remainder of the 2022 season. Uh, I might make it to Florida next season, and hopefully there's another Dallas event. I should be able to attend that one. Um, I will be at USXBL um, in um, San Antonio next week, and I am thinking about um, maybe San Antonio. Uh, I'm sorry, Houston on September 11th. Those are the the, the two um, events that I'm certain I'll be able to make. And September 11th might be the last event that I shoot for the season uh, before I, uh, I shut things off. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I mean, you were also, I know, you know, the rest of my team, they saw you at this last Houston event, uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before that, uh, you know, I hopefully we'll see each other, you know, in San Antonio in a few weeks and, uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing the shots that you get. Uh, so you, you've, uh, shot for NXL, you've shot for USXBL, you've shot, uh, for a couple of tournaments and a couple of tournament series, what would you say was your favorite, you know, single event that you've shot for? Uh, I think uh, my favorite event, let's see, it was probably 2021, I believe. Or, or yeah, 2021 or earlier this year. Um, well, both years, Balls Out has won. So the local team here, Balls Out, uh, you know, they've been able to win it all, right? And I've been able to take their photos, you know, and I think that's been pretty cool, you know, seeing the local team uh, from Delta Field Paintball go up there, you know, San Antonio or, or Dallas, you know, and uh, do very well and either podium or just, uh, you know, taking that first place. So I think that's been um, the coolest thing I've done so far. Awesome. Yeah. You know, nothing like seeing the boys do well. Yeah. Um, I remember that first event uh, this year in San Antonio. It was our uh, Titans D5 guys against Balls Out in the finals. That was a, that was a fun match. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. so then, yeah, it was earlier this year than um, the, the, the match I was referring to. So uh, um, there's going to be some uh, first-time tournament players on, on that team, you know, and uh, – one of the players was telling me he was pretty nervous about his his tournament, and you know, and, you know, I just told him just pretend like you're playing at Delta, you know, like just uh, forget about everything, you know, and just do your job, you know, go out there and don't get shot off great, stay alive, communicate, and you'll do good, and you know, and and uh, he en he ended up winning, you know, with with the balls out on his first tournament, so I think that was uh, pretty cool. Dude, that's that's awesome. I couldn't imagine, you know, winning a tournament as big as USXPL for my very first one. Uh, yeah. Real quick, I see, uh, you know, a bunch of guys here in the chat. Hey, everybody. Um, 
we will, if we have time at the end, we should have time for one or two questions. Uh, we're going to take a question or two from the chat. So if you have anything you'd like to ask Carlos, uh, go ahead, type it in the chat. We'll get to it uh, towards the end. Uh, so this next question is from Sasha Zucker. He's the uh, Dragoons owner. Uh, he asked, uh, do you have a favorite team or player to shoot for? I do have a, a favorite team. I would say it's all the teams that uh, – that, that book me, you know, I really appreciate every team that books me, you know, and I put in uh, the same effort for every team. Uh, and as far as uh, favorite player, uh, I would say it's going to be uh, right here, uh, Devin, um, Devin Lopez from Balls Out. Um, I believe uh, he's a very young, talented player. Uh, I think he's ranked D3 already. And uh, I think probably within the next, within two years, if uh, everything continues to go good for him, uh, hopefully he's able to make it semi-pro, even pro. Like, you never know, but he has that drive and determination. He's young, and he's a really good, aggressive uh, player. So uh, that's something that I've been looking out for. So, so far, he is my favorite uh, player. Cool, man. We're, well, uh, we're going to be put on notice about him. Um, so another question kind of along the similar lines, uh, who are the players or teams that usually, uh, give you the, the best content? Um, I don't, I don't think I have any team that gives me best content. I mean, I think there's good content, uh, from every team. Uh, sometimes you just gotta be in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, it's, I don't think there's a, a team that gives better content, uh, at least not for me. You know, okay. it's 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 my job to go out there and, you know, make every team look good and, you know, provide that content. So I just need to go out there and capture it. Gotcha. OK, uh, so kind of along similar guides for, uh, you know, talking about content recently, we've seen, you know, especially in the last year or two, uh, we've seen increase in popularity popularity in the shorts format the reels format you know uh, i think you know part of it probably because of how popular tiktok has gotten uh you know and that's uh we're talking about videos usually about 30 seconds or less in length and usually you know they're in the um uh, in the portrait uh for smartphone aspect uh has has that uh changed at all how you shoot your videos uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, the reels have grown in popularity so much, you know, and uh, there's a lot of analytics tools uh, that there, you have access to, um, you know, when you have a, a page like the one I have, you know, and you're able to see um, that on the longer videos, um, a lot of people do not watch everything. So the, the best way for you to get... Uh, views and, and uh, like audience retention is to create a short video you know five ten seconds 15 seconds maybe and uh those are the, the videos that produce the best results now i mean you can always do a video edit i mean i still like doing video edits right like the longer ones but they're just not uh they're just not as popular as reels it, it, that's what i've observed gotcha okay that, that's surprising that, uh, you know, the clips are really as short as, you know, five, ten seconds. I, uh, I know personally, uh, I really enjoy going on YouTube, like going on Soulless and, you know, watching the full matches, um, going on Infamous's page. You know, I, I really liked those longer videos, but I'm, I'm really surprised that, you know, that just how much that uh, Reels format's taking over now. Um, yes. So... You know, that sounds, part of it is like a, a way you shoot, but it sounds like a, a big part of it is how you edit. So uh, as far as the editing process for your content, you know, uh, what program do you use uh, and about uh, how long does it take to edit, I, you know, a, let's say a team booked you, how long from, uh, you know, beginning to end, if you're going to edit all of their photos, all of the videos in their package, you know, how long does it take? Um, I would say, um, excuse me, okay. I would say that, um, to edit the photos, uh, it probably takes me, uh, maybe four hours. It, it, it all depends on the conditions of, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, going out there, taking the photo and it's good to go. No, I mean, there's a lot of factors, right? 
uh, you know, is the sun out? Is the full sun out? Is there is it cloudy, overcast, you know, whatever. So usually um, overcast conditions um, provide um, the fastest um, the fastest editing. Um, I have several presets on my computer that I've developed for each field. Um, so that knocks out about eighty-five to eighty percent of the you know of the editing process. So I have to do minor adjustments. You know. Um, just make sure everything's straight, centered, uh, in focus, the colors, uh, sharpness. And then, um, so give or take about four or five hours per team. And uh, video, um, I recently started doing video, right? Uh, I was just doing photos. And for video, I mean, creating a reel, it's just uh, basically going through a uh, video, finding the best part, cutting it out, and then deciding whether you want to slow it down or whether you want to put, put it with the original audio uh, and then just fixing the colors. Uh, a reel doesn't take that long, right? So I would say like, uh, for example, uh, the, last, the last event at Houston, uh, I usually start editing the next day, right? Once, I, once I'm done with the tournament, the next day I'll start editing. So it'll take me about, uh, I could do probably about two teams per day, right? Uh, and the reason I do that is because uh, if you keep going, um, you kind of get bored or tired, your eyes get tired, so you get a little bit lazy, right? So I limit myself to two teams per day, that way uh, the, the finished product looks good for everybody. But um, I would say a package for photo and video, roughly maybe like six hours, seven hours maybe, maybe a little bit less. It all depends on, uh, you know, how much footage you have and, and how much, um, you have to do in post-processing. Um, I'm using uh, Photoshop and, um, and Lightroom for photos, and then I'm using uh, Premiere Pro for the videos. That's uh, the, the software that I use to edit uh, my content. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I know there's a couple of different uh, softwares out there for photo and video. Like me personally, I use uh, DaVinci. Uh, resolve uh, and it seems that uh, I've, I've heard a lot of really good things about Premiere and how uh, you know how user-friendly it is um, so you know throughout that whole process uh, how many how many stills do you usually end up with for for a team like let's say the team makes it all the way to the finals about how many stills would you have for them um, so it, it, it's kind of like, uh, let's say your, your team, uh, does not get past prelims, right? Like usually you can expect between like 75 or a hundred photos, right? And if your team advances, like kind of like every time they advance to say prelims and they advance, uh, past prelims, right? It's maybe like another 25, 30 photos and the same if they make the finals, right? Because uh, you're taking a lot of photos, but sometimes it's a lot of the same thing. It's a lot of the same person running to the same bunker, right? So what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the best photo of, of that moment or the best um, sequence from several moments of the same thing. You know, like, is the ball coming out of the barrel? Is he getting hit? Is, are both of his feet off the ground? Um, you know, and, and those are the, the, the things that I'm looking for. Gotcha. Yeah, these, man, the, all these are things that I had no idea about, uh, all these things that go into shooting for an event. Uh, quick question from the Twitch chat. We got Hector. Uh, he, his question is, uh, which side do you prefer to uh, take pictures of, Dorito side or snake side? Oh, that's an easy one, snake side. And why is that? Uh, well, I would, say, I, I would say because I get hit a lot more on the Dorito side. It's just, uh, it's, 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 you know, you, you get lost in the Doritos. So um, sometimes a player will see your mask or, or something, you know, they'll see your movement. And, you know, next thing you know, you're taking three to the side of the head, you know, or, or to the camera. So on snake side, I'm able to lay down and uh, capture the player when he's crawling or, you know, just um, I'm able to, to have a better field awareness to see uh, those cross shots or bounce shots. Uh, so that I'm not getting hit. So definitely snake side is my favorite to shoot. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so 
you know, you already told us a little bit earlier about your boy and your shirt, uh, but are there, you know, who does the rest of Texas need to be put on notice about? Um, either, you know, players, photographers, projects, anything like that. Uh, let's see. As teams, I would say, I would say be on the lookout for those guys from Austin Evolution. I've shot those guys many times and uh, they've, they've won several and they're always there. Uh, on top, you know, they're always uh, competing for that top spot and uh, they have good coaching, uh, good good uh, group of guys. So I would say watch out uh, for, for that team. And uh, also, you know, the, the player that they have, a young player, uh, Bryson Dorr, uh, he's real good, uh, likes to play on the snake side, very aggressive, very intelligent uh, player, patient, uh, communicates well, and he's, he's uh, very physically fit. Just a, a good player overall that um, I've been able to watch, you know, throughout the years of what, maybe two years. Uh, so he's developed into a real good player. So Austin Evolution and then Bryson Dorr from uh, Austin Evolution as well. I know those guys very well. You know, Evolution's, they've been killing it in uh, the Houston series for sure. And Bryson, yep, he's definitely come a long way and he's, uh, he's smacking people in D5 right now, that's for sure. Uh, so this next question is from Brandon Ortega from Facebook. Uh, his question is, what's the story behind your logo? So, uh, I had, uh, two logos, right? Uh, my first logo, um, let's see if I can turn around right here on, on the, on the right, right over here. That's Devin. That's one of the posters. So that was the first logo that, that I designed, uh, or was designed for me, right? That was the, the original. And um, I wanted to get a different logo for uh, photos and one for video. So for a while, I was using uh, this uh, second logo right, right here for uh, photos. And I was using the other logo for uh, video. Uh, but, you know, as, as you, um, you know, as your audience starts growing uh, and, you know, things start changing, I figured, you know what, I need to stick to one logo because uh, that's the logo that people are going to recognize, uh, you know, get that shot by. So I just decided to stick um, with my first or my retro logo and just go with it from that point on. Gotcha. Well, it's a, it's a sick logo. Uh, and actually, uh, the logo that I'm using for the podcast is a little bit similar. You know, that state of Texas, uh, that red, white, and blue kind of in the same areas. And the logo on top of that. Uh, so one last question from the chat. This will be our last question for tonight. Um, outside of photography, um, and this is from Striker G. Um, uh, I think this uh, guy's name is Steven. Uh, his question is, uh, when are we going to see a comeback for you to play events? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Come on, Steven. All right. So... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know right now. What I'm thinking is uh, maybe uh, be able to jump on a team for uh, 2023 as a D5. Uh, I don't care if it's as a backup, but um, you know, rest assured that uh, whatever team I jump with, I'm gonna give them 110. Uh, percent It's just uh, that I've been focused on getting my business off the ground. You know, getting into green uh, because I've made substantial investments, and uh, you know, now it's the, the tide is starting to turn. And I, I believe 2023, you might see me out there, hopefully, for uh, USXBL San Antonio with one of the squads. Awesome, man. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, so thank you for your time, Carlos. Uh, do you have any last shout-outs or things you'd like to say before we sign off? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd like to give uh, a shout-out to the local field here, Delta Field Paintball. Thank you for uh, allowing me to shoot on your field and uh, – for a, a, gave me a platform where I can uh, showcase my work early uh, and, and when I started taking photos. So huge shout out to Delta Field Paintball, shout out to uh, Balls Out, Dragoons, Austin Evolution, uh, Royal Cheesecake, you know, all these teams that, that uh, book me consistently and uh, you know that a lot of them, we become like real good friends. Uh, thank you to all, all of them. Uh, thank you, Brian, um, for all the help. Uh, all the other photographers, thank you for the inspiration and for helping me along the way. And the Rye Guy, a uh, huge shout out to Rye Guy. Uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, to make my dream of going on the pro field, making that come true. 
Awesome. Yeah. Shout out to all those guys. You know, Carlos has definitely uh, been killing it lately. So, you know, thanks to everybody who's been helping him out along the way. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, make sure you go follow Carlos. Uh, he's at get that shot on Instagram. He's also get that shot on Facebook. Um, so for everybody watching, uh, what other guests would you like to see on the show? Be sure either leave a comment here in the Twitch chat or if you're watching the recording, leave a comment down below on YouTube. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button. Uh, the show will go live weekly here on twitch.tv slash in the pits paintball podcast. I'm going to be posting the recording to YouTube the day after we film. Next week, episode four. Uh, right now, I've got Jell Stewart confirmed. Uh, coach for AC Diesel, also one of the guys who is running USXBL. I'm also currently trying to get uh, see if we can also get Mark Johnson and Greg Pauly on uh, at the same time with Jell. So next week is definitely going to be an episode you don't want to miss. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Carlos. Have a good one. Awesome. Thank you for having me on the show. Have a good one, buddy.